Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Bob's Builds, where I build overcomplicated things. In the last video, I overcomplicated the simple process of building leaf spring perches for my Jeep's Dana 60 front axle. Well, hold on to your micrometers because I'm about to do the same thing for the U bolt plate. The U bolt plate is what the U-bolt nut tighten against to sandwich the axle tube to the leaf springs. Like the original, the shock absorber and the sway bar link will attach to the U-bolt plate. Unlike the original, the sway bar link will have a quick disconnect feature. To start, I cut out the top and bottom of the U-bolt plate out of quarter inch plate steel. I do this with my plasma cutter and a piece of scrap angled steel for a straight edge. I then tack the sides on using a scrap piece of aluminum angle as a guide. The sides are made out of some 3 quarter inch tall, quarter inch thick flat stock steel that I had laying around. I don't know why I had this laying around, but boy I was glad I did. After welding, I plopped the U-bolt plate into my mill. I then drill the holes for the U-bolts and the leaf spring pin. Utilizing an end mill, I elongate the holes. I used a drill bit first because the end mill did not like plunging. I don't know why. Maybe it was dull. You know, kind of like this video. Now it's time for the shock mount. I threw some inch and three quarter rod into my lathe. I then turned it down to a half inch so that the shock can slide on. I then threaded the end so that a half inch nut will fit. Making the sway bar mount is basically the same. I plop some inch and three quarter rod into the lathe and turn the end down to a half inch. I cut off the corner of the end so that I could slip the sway bar link on easier. I also ground it smooth. I did this because the link will swing back and forth a lot, so I didn't want the mount to eat away at the bushing. I gently place the mount into my mill so that I can flatten out a bit of the end of the shaft. I do this so that I can use a drill bit to drill a hole. This hole is for the pin that will keep the sway bar link in place. I use the link with a washer to get the needed location of the pin. The link originally attached to the sway bar via a bolt. However, to get the sway bar link off, it needs to slide out. Using a bolt would defeat the quick disconnect feature. Therefore, I need to make a pin. I made the pin in much the same fashion and I was going to weld it to the sway bar. However, I suddenly realized that the sway bar is spring steel. I don't believe you can reliably weld to spring steel. To remedy the situation, I used a C-clip to keep the pin on. Luckily, I was able to put the pin into my lathe and turn a groove. Unfortunately, I didn't have anything to cut such a thin groove with. So I improvised. Yep, that's a sawzall blade. Yeah, don't try this at home, or well, anywhere. To weld the shock mount to the U-bolt plate, I used a scrap piece of angled steel as a back plate. Then I tacked the mount in place. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough room for the mount to be placed directly over the axle. So I broke the tack welds and relocated the shock mount to the side of the U-bolt plate. I also welded the sway bar link mount to the other side of the U-bolt. Any resemblance to a spaceship is purely by accident. And the U-bolt plate and mounts are done. Be sure to check out my YJ Jeep Dana 60 front axle swap playlist. Also let me know in the comments if you ever built something that accidentally resembled something cool or weird. Please take note of the highly technical temporary retainment mechanism. Yeah, the ratchet straps. Once everything is set into place, I tack the perches to the axle. I then finish welding the perches to the axle off the vehicle. 